So today's video is a little bit different because I am going to the most expensive F1 Grand Prix there is. Las Vegas, big casinos, big hotels, and a pretty big price point for the Grand Prix. And in today's video, we're gonna experience one of these packages, the Virgin Hotels Skybox package, starting at $40,000. So that's all to come. I'm pretty damn excited. I think it's now time to go to the airport. And since we are doing a pretty expensive Grand Prix experience, we're going to travel like we are as well. So we checked in in the airport lounge, making the most of the free booze, honestly, and a massive cookie, which was honestly the size of my head. It was great. Uh, I had that before the main dish because I'm a kid like that. But then it was time to go and uh, depart from Heathrow, 11 hours direct flight to Las Vegas. But it's made better by having this lovely amount of leg room. This was the first time I've ever fl flown like this on a long haul flight and it was incredible. And I'm just going to cut in right here as I edit this video. Even though this very video isn't a sponsored video, the only reason this video is even possible is because I'm on a brand trip. I was taken out to Las Vegas by a brand to do some deliverables for them on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, so they're the ones who actually are giving me these tickets to experience. So I've not paid out of my own pocket for this. That would be absolutely mental. I, the, things aren't going that well but um the, the fact that i'm in a position to be invited out by a brand like this is all down to you guys so massive thank you for the support um but yeah also want to just note it's not a sponsored video but it is being possible because a brand's taken me out to the trip. Just wanted to have a little disclaimer there. Let's get back to it. So yeah, the 11 hour journey began from London Heathrow to Las Vegas, the other side of the world. But oh my days, the level of service in upper class on this Virgin, uh, Virgin Atlantic flight was incredible. Booze, great food, and the biggest thing was uh, a lay down bed. I have never experienced this in my life and probably might not do again in my life. This was unreal getting a little bit of kip landing then in nevada las vegas immediately bombarded with like you know signage art on the wall um immediately could feel the vibe just the energy of this place and taking an uber to our hotel you can see the strip from very far away and very soon i'll be seeing that up close but into the hotel and a weird thing about hotels in vegas is they've all got casinos in the lobby which is pretty mad um to me but also this hotel had a mclaren show car in it which is pretty damn sick and then i actually got into my room which was not even a hotel room it was basically a flat and this is my re genuine reaction. I was gobsmacked. And just like that, we are here in Las Vegas. It was a long old fly here, but we have made it and we are ready for the most expensive Grand Prix on the calendar. This is the hotel I'm at. As you can see, it's um, it's pretty decent. I mean, it's like a whole ass flat. It's not really even just a hotel room. There's a whole living room space going on here. Um, yeah, I've got a whole mobile setup going on because I'm actually here for more than just the Grand Prix. Uh, as I said earlier, um, you know, here for a brand trip. So there's been some filming done here before, but I'm just joining you now in this video for the Grand Prix bit. I've actually been here for several days already. Um, yeah, and a little tour, you know, lovely bed. There's two TVs for absolutely no reason. Why do you need double-sided TVs? You know, ridiculous. Um, massive bathroom, bath, shower, everything. Yeah, it's um, pretty mad, pretty mad. And look at this view. So we come here, draw the curtain, and right there, um, as you can see, is actually the grandstand uh, of the circuit. There is the Heineken Silver Stand, and that white thing along the top is actually the skybox, which where we, we where we will be watching the sessions from. You can actually see a little bit of turn one, I think, uh, just there. If you look a little bit closer, it might be a little bit blurry, I don't know, with the zoom level of this camera, but it's there. And uh, above it is the skyline of the Las Vegas Strip. There's the high roller, uh, various different hotels along the strip. And yeah, basically get a skyline view of the whole Las Vegas Strip 
from this hotel room. Literally, like from Luxor all the way up to the right hand side. Yeah, pretty, pretty mad. I think one of the perks coming to Las Vegas is it's not just the Formula One, obviously, which I, which I hope is going to be a decent affair. We shall see. But um, also just seeing Vegas. So before we get into the F1 action, let's have a look around. Took a little walking tour of the entire Las Vegas Strip. Began with the Venetian, which was not a real place. Um, seeing the gondolas inside a mall was incredible. And really everything about Las Vegas and the Strip just doesn't feel real. Everything is massive around here and it's like an overstimulating place to be um it was like one big amusement park it just didn't actually feel like a real place and it's not really a real place i don't think but yeah seeing things like the bellagio fountains that weren't in action but the the caesar's palace the forum shops that that, that's, that that was literally a shop that last clip we saw a fake london eye a fake eiffel tower they've got many things from around the world that they brought to Nevada, to Las Vegas, and uh, seeing the skyline from the top of the high roller was pretty damn awesome, and also the top of the F1 building as well. So with the tourism done in Las Vegas, it was time for the F1 action to begin Thursday in the Skybox. This was the kind of fan zone area just outside, and then we went up to the top floor of the main grandstand, and this was it. It was massive. To say it's like a bougie... Uh, uh, hospitality area and and the prices are what they are it was incredibly it was incredible how big it was and how many people were actually there and this was the view on the main straight of the circuit right and so here we are in the sky box uh on the main straight of uh, of the circuit epic views which you would have seen by now as i've cut in it's kind of almost described like paddock club but but not in the paddock basically um as you would have seen by now the packages astronomical they go for 40,000 US dollars which includes a hotel stay so this is very much the most expensive Grand Prix ever um, yeah ridiculous but yeah we're gonna enjoy it we're gonna see FB1 FB2 tonight and uh, see what the crack is with this very cold circuit to a stop just at the top of the Las Vegas Strip straightaway there you see the car being taken behind the wall and at the top of the screen you can see that the stewards have declared the practice session will not be resumed with some 40 minutes and change remaining in the session frankly jonathan i'm at a loss as to explain why was what appears to be a perfectly you've heard that right you've heard that right fp1 here you can't make it up you can't make it up first practice session of Vegas and it's been cancelled within 15 minutes that is a massive L that is a massive L and the best bit is you know what as I've said before in this video I'm thankfully here because of a brand I can't imagine the anger some of these people are feeling in here they've paid this much money and their first practice session has been canned. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Lads, what, what are we making of this travesty? No idea. I think it's a manhole cover. Manhole cover? Okay. Well, at least the track looks pretty, but... Yeah. There, there has to be something that is a detrimental safety. It's a big issue. L. It's uh, probably maybe the, maybe the first L of many of this Grand Prix. Um, that's what that's what expensive gets you. Just L's. The only place we weren't taking L's at this point was actually just back in the actual hospitality area of the Skybox whilst we waited out the rest of the time that FB1 should have been on for basically. This is what happens when you have no session to watch. <laughs> right, so let's inspect what the most expensive Grand Prix on the calendar has to offer in terms of food. So we've got starters, salad of prawns, baby spinach salad. Not bad, not bad. The mains, actually really quite intriguing. We've got rack of spring lamb, we've got scallops, cod, homemade risotto, ricotta, spring chicken, and then dessert, we've got a chilled chocolate fondant. So 
That is a pretty good, like remember, we're trackside, we're in a temporary skybox, and they're offering pretty damn decent food, and it's all like that, like in proper plates, free drink, and it's all free, by the way, because you, you paid for it, so it's all free food, free drinks all the time, literally on the balcony, um, during FP1, the 10 minutes we got of it, I literally had, I finished my beer and it was like a minute I finished it and immediately a waiter just came up to me and went, oh, do you want another one? Oh yeah, cool, fine, whatever. So um, yeah, you do get treated quite well if you were to pay this much for a seat like this. Whether you actually make your money back is another thing. I feel you would have to do like a Joey Tribbiani sort of food challenge to actually make your money back. Um, to be honest, but that's obviously why they, that's the catch, that's how they make their money. But yeah, for those of you who are interested in what the actual food looked like, uh, this is what we had. We had the uh, fillet steak, I think this was. Really, really nice, lovely stuff. Like I said, like it's literally like restaurant level quality food, plated up really nicely. Dessert was, oh, lovely, chocolate fondant. So you do get treated really, really well. And it was definitely nice during the whole delayed FP1, FP2. Right, we've got an update. Yeah, you can pay all this money to get a sick Skybox ticket. But look at this. So this is in GA. And you can actually see a pretty sick amount of turn one. And the pit exit is right there. So you would have to park pretty early in the day um, for GA to watch the race from here. But technically, this is actually a pretty sick spot compared to what, 40K or whatever up there. I don't know what GA, GA was here for Las Vegas. Probably still pretty damn pricey compared to other circuits, but just a little interesting to note in the research of this whole most expensive Grand Prix is this GA spot at turn one is actually pretty damn sick. So I think it's safe to say the Thursday here at the Las Vegas Grand Prix didn't exactly go to plan. Let's see if the Friday is going to be any better. We've got FP3 coming up. We've got qualifying coming up. Hopefully there's no track issues and we can get full running. And I actually think qualifying is going to be pretty damn exciting around this circuit. Seeing the drivers really try and push it to the limit at a very difficult circuit, very cold conditions, brakes, lockups, potential mistakes at those high pressure moments. Yeah, hopefully we're going to get our money's worth today. Well, I'll just show off a little bit more of the fan zone area outside of the grandstand in the East Harmon zone. This was massive um, telephone box by Virgin Hotels trying to bring the uh, British vibes to the circuit and uh, getting ready to actually watch some Formula One because FB3 and qualifying did go off without a hit. So we actually got some actual Formula One proper action uh, for an hour in FB3. Again, a banging menu of free food and free free drink uh, this time it was a little bit busier obviously because it was qualifying day so it did feel a bit more packed and a bit busier and difficult to like find a table i found actually kind of almost felt like they oversold it and on that point uh, i had a few little comments after actually watching a full f1 session from the balcony area about the actual ticket experience All right so here we are then for qualifying day we've just had fp3 which went off without a hitch and so far um the day's been better obviously no issues with the circuit uh and as you can be as you've clearly seen so far the hospitality again pretty damn sick some lovely foods but um you know for the amount of money the ticket costs in terms of the viewpoint i've always had this and said this about paddock club as well to be honest is when you're on the main straight and you've got this balcony uh and your seats are you don't have seats, it's just an area and it's a balcony. I actually think you're better off getting a grandstand ticket. I think you can get a cheaper grandstand ticket that's better. Right lads, it's been a howler. Absolute McLaren pain. We're crying, crying in the club right now. The club being the skybox. Um, yeah, uh, I'm glad I haven't paid £40,000 to watch that. Some of these people maybe have. Um, so yeah, if you ask me how the most expensive Grand Prix is going so far, um, we're taking L's. We're taking L's, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, hopefully Ferrari turn up and they can actually do well and give us a non-Red Bull bit of hope for the race tomorrow. But um, yeah, I will say also one thing uh, myself and Max here have uh, 
Uh, but you're, you're so unbelievably impressed by the camera. Yeah, so one thing that me and Max have really sussed out here is um, they've really oversold the amount of people in this skybox. So if I pan the camera, like, look at the amount of people that are just on this balcony. Like, this is the view you get if you didn't get a spot early. And it just... It's not hitting, is it? It's really not... It's not giving. Well, I'm only... I'm only six foot, so... I Even I struggle to see when I'm behind someone. So, yeah, I would be pretty frustrated if I dropped 40 bags and I had to look at the back of some geezer's head. I would be pretty... Frustrated. Yeah, we were literally staring at a bold man's head uh, and his cap. So, yeah, that was blessed. Um... <laughs> yeah, there was a bit of shoulder barging. It's not kind of etiquette you would think for people this rich, but there you go. There you go. So, um, yeah, we took a massive L on, on well, not Friday, but Wednesday. Oh, uh, no, Thursday. We took a massive L on Thursday. Personally, as, as Team Quadrant, we've taken an L here with McLaren. We'll see how Saturday rolls, but... Um, yeah, not much else to say. A Saturday race day here for Formula One in Las Vegas. And of course, once again, for the final time, some amazing hospitality with free food and drink with our package. And then Max Futrell gave me a little prediction ahead of the race beginning. All right, guys, we got um, Chuck Leclerc going off pole with a Max just strap line on the P2. Um, it's going to be a titanic battle into P1 here. Who knows what's going to happen? Max has got that anger in him. And Chuck, he just needs to get that win off pole. The, the conversion rate's ass right now, so he needs to get that dub. What's up, it's Chris Leclerc! Chuck, Chuck Leclerc immediately has been pushed off. Shit, the strap on to the <laughs> the strap on, the strap on is in P1. It's happened immediately. He's pushed him. Well, that happened immediately. He actually yeah, literally completely drove, drove, drove him wide there. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> the wide angle. He's loving the wide angle. I don't look normal though. What's that camera done? Why do I look like that? It's the wide angle. It's the wide angle. You have to be in the middle for it to look normal. I'm Instagram what I really like. I mean, Sergeant's still P6. That's just uh, amazing itself. I do as well. Hello, flat. Oh, virtual safeguard. Virtual safeguard. For what? For what? For who, Chris Kamara? For who, Chris Kamara? Hamilton's down to P15. Back to P14. Oh, All right, yeah. Perez has broken his front wing. Oh, my God. Right, Once retire again. The retire the career. It's all over. It's all those marshals in the casino. Yeah, so now what were you going to see my tweet? What? No, 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 no. What was the tweet? Oh! That's in the casino. I agree, Leclerc. Leclerc's complaining about yeah, the Sappen pushing right wide. Oh, that was just not on. That was not on. The Sappen yeah, literally opened up the steering wheel. I'd say it's probably a bit illegal. Yeah, just a bit illegal. Here we go, Sergeant! Well, three laps in, Lando P13. It's not bad. Come on, man. Just keep going at that rate, we'll be P3. Of that car, he says no. We're not good at low downforce. Oh shit, we went straight on. What happened is brakes. Oh no. Well, that's the end of my night. And Max is gone. Oh bloody hell, he's in the wall. No, what the? It bought him down. Okay. Oh shit. Chaotic turn one replays. Oh my god. Bloody hell. Turn one was literally my F1 no grip mod. There was no grip. No, it's just you're not in the you need to be in the middle. See? On the side, look. I will, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, these things are made <laughs> Oh, God! He goes for it! On the title! The crowd are loving it. 
McClurley's the Stafford second, Gasly third. Mega, the Stafford pits. He's struggling with his tyres. For once, Ferrari actually looked like the better people on their tyres. The Piastri and Hamilton just crashed. The McLaren luck ain't the McLaren, the McLaren luck ain't there today. So let's recap. Both McLarens pretty stuffed, and uh, that means Max is on his um, 12th drink or something like that. <laughs> trying to have a drink every lap. So, a drink right now. I'm not quite there yet. He's got a few drinks to catch up on. That sums up our race. Wanting to see McLaren do well, but we've got a race on our hands with McLaren. Looking pretty good. Verstappen's catching Russell now. I assume Russell and Verstappen are going to have a horrendous crash. To be honest, I could see it happening. Oh, I'm so surprised. I'm so surprised. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. You know what that is? That is a, that's a move I would make in career mode. <laughs> that's a career mode move. That, that's a virtual GP move. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a move I make. It's fine with damage is on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. damage on for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, Perez... 80, he surely gets a free pit stop here. Yeah, come on, guys, Perry's gonna win. <laughs> Perry's gonna <laughs> I think he's actually gonna get a free pit stop here. Yeah, well, he on. is, he is. Charles in the lead now. Uh, Charles in the lead, but. Checo's right behind. Yeah, Checo's the right there. Fresh, fresh tyres. Oh, Checo goes for it. He's gone for it. He's gone for it. Oh, he's into the lead. He's leading, he's leading. Perez, Clive's back in the lead. The Clive's back in the lead. Great move. Brace on our hands for the lead. The Sappen back into first. Leclerc second. But I reckon the Ferrari has enough pace to come back at him. I hope, I hope. So after all the chaos, it's going to be a Red Bull 1 2. The sphere is a checkered flag, which is fair. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't know how it was on TV for everyone, but from track side, it actually looked like a pretty decent race from, from the track. You know, the chaotic flashpoints. This American crowd was getting pretty damn hyped up. To the last two corners, good Leclerc. Oh, Leclerc's gone for the dive! Leclerc! Last minute gets P2! <laughs> he gets P2 at the death! At the death, he's got it. The Stafford wins. The class done it. Max Verstappen wins. Max Verstappen wins. But what a move by Leclerc. Fair play, fair play. The man who doesn't give a shit about this race track has won. Not again, not again. And just like that then, the Las Vegas Grand Prix, our experience of it is finally over. The most expensive Grand Prix in the end, pretty, well, for, at least from track side, was pretty damn decent. If, you know, the teams were a little bit closer, which has been a problem all season, it would have been a real banger of race. But even then, we still got some great swapping for the lead. Overall, really enjoyed the race in the end. In terms of the actual experience um, for the Skybox, I think the hospitality, you know, the food and drink was class. The viewing situation, not really. Like, if I'd actually paid that much for that, I actually probably would have been quite irked by that. But I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys made of it in the comments below. Do you reckon, you know, it's like worth it at all probably not probably not and like i said i think in the middle of the video um let me know if you guys want me in the future to maybe go and you know go to the cheapest grand prix and then kind of maybe do a comparison of the two but yeah um i just thought you know being on this trip um i didn't have any obligation to make a youtube video but i just thought it'd be a really cool thing to to, to vlog it i may as well you know not every day you get to go to the las vegas grand prix um 
you know, I don't know if I'll ever, I'm ever going to be coming back to Las Vegas. I hope so, but you just never know. So I thought I'd vlog it. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.